sermon tonight. As one preacher said, three points in a poem. I don't have that. I've got a few things written down here and, and I'll try to uh, deliver what the Lord had for us. Yes, yes. So I've had a thought on my on my mind for a couple weeks and uh, uh, I've tried to, to get that together and uh, sometimes they just uh, uh, they just don't come together like you want them to. And uh, but uh, <clears throat> I still feel like the Lord's laid this on my heart. But uh, uh, as Sister Kathy was testifying a while ago, uh, I become convicted. Sometimes you'll get a thought on your mind, Brother Horn, and uh, and instead of getting up and maybe exhorting on it or expounding on it, when you got the thought. You want to hold on to it and try to preach it, Everybody. and everything don't preach. Right. <laughs> Sometimes those thoughts just, they're not meant to preach. They're just meant right. to deliver to hell. That's right. And, uh, <clears throat> but uh, I appreciate the Lord, and uh, and it's good to be home. We got away for a few days, and uh, it's always good to get away and relax, but it's so good to be home. Amen. And uh, whenever you start you know, anytime you go on vacation, you you uh, you take your time getting there and just enjoy the trip. But when you start back home, it's a different story. The car don't stop nowhere till you get in the driveway. It's just the way I am. I'm ready to get home. Uh, I remember a few years ago we went down south to Myrtle Beach, and uh, I believe we left on a uh, I can't remember what day we left on, but anyway, we took two days to get there. We just took our time. It was about a 10 hour drive. And uh, took a couple, of, we left one day and then we drove a while. We spent the night somewhere and we made it there. But when it come time to come home, I didn't care if it was 15 hours. Mm -hmm. That car wasn't going to stop except for gas until I got back home. And, uh, and I thought, we're on our way home tonight. Right. And we better be in a hurry. Right. And, uh, and I thought, we better not be stopping and lollygagging around on our way home. I thought we got to get in a hurry. And I appreciate the Lord. But in the Bible, book of Acts, <coughs> chapter 1, and I'm just going to read one verse. <coughs> chapter 1, verse 8. <coughs> it was 
Is that your prayer? I've got a very itchy throat tonight. <clears throat> Verse 8 says, But ye shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And ye shall be witness unto me both in, Judea, in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. Uh, <clears throat> I begin to think about this. And uh, he said here, but ye shall receive power. And, uh, and I begin to think a little bit about power. And, uh, and I thought, have you ever looked back on things of the past and wonder how they were able to accomplish some of the things that they've done without the power and the equipment that we have today? Uh, my, my mom's dad, my papa, uh, he was born in 1900. I was born in 71, so he was, uh, up, up, in, up in age whenever I was born. And I was his first biological grandchild. And, uh, but, uh, he worked for the WPA. And, uh, so whenever I'm out driving or something and I come through an old underpass, or an old bridge, and there's a plaque there, and it says this was built by the WPA. I have great respect for the labor, Brother Rodney, that went into that. And I look, and I and I and, and I and I've heard him tell stories of of some of the things he done, and and uh, my great grandfather on on both Sparks' side was actually four years younger than he was. He was born 1904, and uh, and he told me a story one time of. Uh, some things they were doing when I believe they put in maybe River Drive or some road and, and uh, they uh, they was some things had done and, and him and Grandpa got that job accomplished and uh, for some extra time off to get some uh, uh, some uh, uh, some of their crops done or whatever it was necessary and, and I would listen to those stories and, and the great things that they got got accomplished without machinery. Yeah. Just horses and and uh, uh, hand tools and those things. But yet they got things accomplished, right. and and then, uh, uh, but but you know we 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 think of all those things that were done, and uh, and and there was great things accomplished without a lot of equipment, mm -hmm. and then we look back on the spiritual side of things, and we look at all the great things we we you know we tell the stories and we hear the stories, and and uh, and I thought uh, I've said before I used to love to come to church early, and and, and I'd sit with Brother Elmo and. And he would tell stories of, uh, uh, of years gone by of, of how that you know he used to work all day and, and he'd come in and they'd walk to church and, and uh, most of the time they'd shout to church, shout all the way through church and then shout back home of the night and, uh, because the presence of God was so real to them. And, uh, and, and they was, uh, uh, there was so much power that they had. And then I began to think about us so many times. We've got automobiles to drive to church. Uh, we've got nice air-conditioned homes to live in. We've got the uh, air-conditioned building when we get here. And, and, and all the things that God has blessed us with. And I thought if we're not careful, we're forgetting the most important thing, and that is the power. The power of God. And, and I thought, uh, <coughs> you know, Rose Sparks mentioned this morning of uh, uh, a, a lot of times we, we, we talk about times going by and, and those great powers and, and we wonder uh, we, why we can't have some of those same, same things today. Uh, but the truth is we can if we're willing to sacrifice. Uh, you know, and, and, uh, and, and, and I mentioned, you know, uh, I, I remember when we were, uh, when I was younger and we'd go on, uh, Sister Kathy and I was, we was going uh, into Pigeon Forge and and uh, my mind went back to the first time that I ever went there, just as a child. And, and uh, Russell Parks, you know, he, 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 we didn't have a lot of money. And, and, uh, and I remember us driving down through there, and, which is, you know, commercialized all the way out to uh, Interstate 40 now. But back then when we was children, when you got off the inter interstate there on Interstate 40 and, and you drove all the way to Sevierville, you didn't see nothing but a few signs. And uh, but we started seeing the signs of all the things that was going on in Pigeon Forge, and, and just as children, we began to be be excited about 
uh, we was on vacation and we were going somewhere and, and uh, we would look at all the, the billboards of the of the, uh, the attractions that was there and, and they were minor compared to what's there now and and uh, but uh, uh, but we you know she said they were the same way as children we'd drive down and we'd look at those things and we were anticipating getting there. Uh, and it seemed like it took forever to get from the interstate into the severe building. And, uh, uh, but, uh, <coughs> we get to think about that. And, and I thought, uh, uh, we didn't, I didn't realize as a child the sacrifice that was being made in order for us to go enjoy those things. I didn't, I didn't understand the fact that uh, they had to, to put back extra money that they really didn't have and, and, and all the things they went through in order to sacrifice that we could have a little bit of a vacation until I got my own family. Brother Rodney, and then I had to start making those sacrifices. And, right. and the times that we went on vacations, uh, uh, the money we had to lay back, and the things that maybe we had to do without so that we could take our children and enjoy those things. And, and I thought, uh, uh, you know, there's, there's a lot of things that we look on in the past, and we don't realize the sacrifice that it took right. until it's in our shoes. And, uh, and I began to think about that, and I thought the, the, the reason that so many of those great uh, uh, revivals and, and the things that we hear of, it was not because of, of anything or, out of the ordinary, it was because of the sacrifice. That's it. And, I, and I began to think about that this week, and I thought, Lord, help me be willing to sacrifice. Lord, help me be willing to, to make that extra uh, sacrifice in order to draw closer to you. Amen. And I thought as I look around and I, and I see my uh, our family seem like they just draw further and further away from God. And I thought our hearts become heavy. But I thought, Lord, help me be willing to yeah. make that sacrifice. Oh, Lord, help me be willing yeah. Lord, to do what is necessary Amen. to draw close to you that I can have that power. Amen. That power that's needed. <coughs> now, Lord, uh, we've got to have power. Yes, we do. Now, Lord, it's going to take power to make it. I thought we can't continue on. No. Now, you know, uh, I like automobiles. And I like full of them old cars. And, uh, but we were there in, in Tennessee the other day, and we were driving through, and and I thought, uh, you know, I don't think much about these electric automobiles. Uh, not good. They, uh, but, uh, uh, but they've got a lot of power. And, and if you read up on them and, and the horsepower that those things got, and, and, uh, and, and I'm not really into it, but, uh, uh, but the, the amount of time it takes from zero to 60. And, and, and I thought, I've never ridden nothing that, that is quite that fast. Uh, but we were in, in Tennessee the other day, and you know, and if I decided I needed gas, then I pulled into the gas station and I put my card in, and, and, and in just a few moments of time there, just a couple minutes, I had a full tank of gas, I was on my way. But we drove by, and there was this guy sitting here in this seventy or eighty thousand dollar Tesla, and he was backed up into this shopping center, and they had their signs, their things there, and they were just sitting there <coughs> waiting for their car to charge. And, uh, and I told Sister Kathy, I said, you know, I said, uh, uh, that would be the worst downfall of owning that thing. Is having to wait for the, for the energy to charge back up and able to go. And I thought, uh, uh, but you know, but I looked at that on the spiritual side. And I thought, uh, we, we've got the capability of stopping here and feeling up. But the problem is a lot of times we've got ourselves caught up in so much stuff that we're more like a Tesla and we're having to sit there and wait for a charge to come by to get us going again. And I want, but I want the power of God uh, to be ever present in my life. I thought I want it to, to be ever more pouring down within me. Not caught up into the things that's going to strip me of the power of God. I want the When we're going through a, a trial, he's still God. No matter what we're going through, God is still God. And the power of God is still uh, uh, everlasting and still prevalent in our, in our lives. So Kathy was talking about the, uh, the, the, the woman with the, with the meal barrel. And, and, uh, and I, you know, she was at her wit's end, if you would. I mean, she had, she had come to the point, this is all I've got. I'm gonna I'm gonna use this up 
And then I'm going to die. Yeah. But she forgot that there was still a God. Amen. There was still a God that was well able to sustain her. Yeah. And I thought even in her lowest time, God came by with his power. Yeah. I thought we read the book of Exodus chapter 3 and verse 6. It says, moreover, he said, I am the God of thy father, mm -hmm. the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, mm -hmm. for he was afraid to look upon God. Amen. You know, we find Moses here, and uh, <clears throat> he is in, I guess you could say, uh, a bad spot. Yeah. Uh, he killed this, this Egyptian, uh -huh. <clears throat> buried him in the sand, yeah. and he went and hid for his life, and, and uh, now he's, he's married a, a wife, and so he's on the backside of the desert taking care of his father-in-law's herd. Amen. Amen. And, uh, and, then, uh, and then, then we got the children of Israel. Here they are under taskmasters, uh -huh. uh, into slavery, if you would. Uh, under under uh, under great bondage, and uh, and Moses is out here in the wilderness, and then the Lord appears to him, and he says, "I'm the God of Jacob, uh -huh. uh, or Abraham, uh, Isaac, and the God of Jacob." Amen. And then he goes on, and and, he, and 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 Moses looked up, and and he hid his face because he realized that he was in the very presence Amen. of God. Amen. He realized that he was in the presence of the same God that he had heard uh, of all the great things he'd done for Abraham. Amen. He'd heard of all the great things he'd done for Isaac. Yeah. He'd heard of all the great things he'd done for Jake, uh, Jacob. And now it was Moses. Amen. And I walked up. Uh, so, uh, uh, you know, he realized that he was in the presence of an almighty power. And I thought, I want to be in that presence of that almighty power. No matter where I find myself, I want to recognize the presence of God. And I thought it's important that we recognize him. I thought, uh, uh, you know what, uh, you take uh, one of my, my children, and I thought I could be uh, doing something, and, and one of my children called out my name, I recognize that's my child. Or Sister Kathy calls out my name, I uh, we met a crowd of people, and, and she and I recognize she's my wife, and I recognize her name. And I thought, how much more should we recognize the voice of God? Right. Recognize who is calling us. Right. And I thought, if we're not careful, we get so caught up in the things of life that we fail to recognize Amen. who God is. Amen. How long to, uh, but He is a God that is well able. And I thought uh, he wants uh, uh, wants us to be to be uh, sensitive to who he is, Amen. that we can have more of his power. Amen. I thought uh, I thought I, I want I want the power of God. I want his I want his spirit ever present in my life. Book of Second Kings, chapter two, verse fourteen. Uh, we can read of Elijah. And uh, we know the story of Elijah, the great things Elijah done. Elijah fixing to be called away. And then and Elisha is, is following after him. And, 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 and I believe it was, what, three times there that they, they came to him and said, Don't us not that thou, that the master's going to be taken away. And, 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 and Elisha, he knew these things was fixing to happen. Amen. Elijah told him, You stay here. He said, but I've got to be with you. Amen. I've got to be there with you. Amen. So Elisha asked, Lord, what, what do you want, Elisha? He said, I want a double portion. Amen. He said, you've asked a hard thing. Yeah. You know, Elisha had been following after the man of God. He realized uh, the, the greatness that God had done through him. Amen. But yet he wanted even more than that. Right. And I thought as I began to think about that, and, and I know we, we've heard those stories of old, and and, and, our, and, our, and, the, and the great things that our grandparents done, and, and, and the, the saints of old, and, and the great things that was accomplished through them. But I thought we have got, uh, if we just simply will make the sacrifice, if you right. would, uh, we can have greater power today oh, than they had. Right. That's right. But yet we right. become comfortable. In the state that we're in, I thought uh, in, in Book of Second Kings, chapter two, verse fourteen, uh, it says, uh, "And he took the mantle of Elijah 
that fell from him, and he smote the waters and said, Where is the Lord God of Elijah? Amen. And when he also had smit the waters, they parted hither and thither, and Elisha went over. Yeah. Oh, and he realized that, that the same God that Elijah served was good enough for Elisha. Amen. And I thought the same God that, that, uh, that uh, Elisha served was good enough for my grandparents. And I thought the same God that was good enough for them is good enough for me. And I thought it's good enough for you and your children and your children's children. But I thought we've got to make that sacrifice in order to have the power that we need from God. And I thought he wants someone to pick up the mantle. Uh, he wants us to, uh, to get the power through. I thought uh, he gave Elisha a double portion of Elijah's power. And on, even after Elisha was, was dead and buried, uh, I believe it was a, the, the man who was killed in, in battle, and they threw him into the, uh, the sepulcher there on, on the bones of Elisha. Amen. And he was raised back to life. Amen. I thought even after he was dead and gone, there was still power Amen. in his own dry bones. Yes. And I thought, I want to have power through God. Amen. I thought, I don't want to be stagnant and sitting around waiting for the power of God to move. I thought I want to have that power within me. And I thought, uh, you know, and it's so easy for us to sit around and, 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 and allow things to keep us from drawing close to God. And I thought this morning we got up and, and uh, which we normally do get up pretty early. <coughs> well, I'm Sister Kathy get up before I do on Sunday, but this morning I got on up and we were sitting there on the couch and uh, she, uh, Turned on a, a message to Brother Randy Webb preaching, and from what I gathered, he was at the Richlands camp meeting, and uh, he was preaching and and uh, preaching like Brother Randy does. And uh, but uh, he told a story that uh, whenever he was a young young preacher, and he didn't say how old, and but before the new tabernacle was built there at Richlands, and and he said here where this building is, he said there was a chain link fence, and he said inside of it was a ball court. And he said, a bunch of us young preachers got together and, and uh, between the services, and we was up there playing basketball. And he said, I'm not going to call no names, but he said, one young preacher fouled another young preacher. And he said, uh, the other one, Howard, you better watch out. And he said, you know, they was getting, they was getting a little, little friction there. And he said, Brother Ralph Horton come rolling up through there. And said, he pulled up to the fence, and he motioned for him to come over there. And he said, we all walked over there. And, and uh, Brother Ralph looked up and he said, how many of you brothers is ready to preach? Brother Randy said, I thought under my breath, I know two of them. But he said, I didn't say a word. And uh, he said, uh, but he looked up and he said, he realized Brother Ralph was telling him, you've got to have more power in God right. than playing with the frivolous things of life. And there's nothing wrong with, with them getting out and playing a little basketball and, and, and having a good time with one another. But Brother Horton seen the importance Right. And it seemed the necessity right. of drawing and, and spending that time Amen. that we had for God. Amen. They were a camp meeting. Uh, Brother Horton felt like they would be down there praying for the service instead of ever playing basketball. Right. Uh, you know, and, uh, but, uh, uh, but yet there was things that we can allow to draw us and keep us from being where we need to be with God. Right. And I thought, but I want to draw close to him. Amen. And I thought, I don't want to allow nothing to come in between me and God. I thought, I don't want to get myself caught up playing with things that I don't want to be playing with because we can be separated from God. Because if we're not careful, those things can destroy us. They can kill us. I, thought, I read an illustration a few years ago and I thought getting caught up in the wrong things can be very dangerous. And, uh, and I looked the article up and I, and I thought it had been some time ago that I that I, that I heard about this, and, and I, so I looked the article up, and, and it was in September of 2004. There was a, a woman, and the article said she was 44 year old, and her name was Alexandria Hall, and uh, she had acquired, she loved uh, exotic animals. She had uh, a lot of uh, different types of reptiles in her house, uh, they said she had a, a small alligator, uh, pythons, uh, just a li all types of lizards, just all kinds of things. But she had acquired a viper, a 
type of pit viper that was not even native to this, this country. And she had got it over here and she had that thing in her home. And uh, they said that she had a habit of when she was cleaning their containers that she would just turn them loose and let them slither around her home. And then she would go pick it up and put it back in its container. And she had this pit viper and she had no doubt done it numerous times. But she turned it loose and when she went to put it back up, it struck her and bit her. So she drove herself to the hospital and uh, <clears throat> five days later, she passed away because there was no anti-venom for this type of reptile wow. in the United States. And, uh, and I thought, uh, you know, and, I, and, I, and as I began to think about that, and uh, like I said, I've been thinking about most of this for a couple of weeks now. And, uh, you know, and it's something that she enjoyed. I don't know why, but it was something that she enjoyed, something she, uh, that she had, been, had got herself caught up in. And no doubt she never dreamed that those things that had become such a pet to her that they would ever hurt her. But one day, it did. It cost her life. And I thought, you know, and I thought there's a lot of things that we do and a lot of things that we enjoy, and we don't expect it to ever hurt us. But if we get caught up in it, it can spiritually kill us. It can spiritually drain all the power that we need out of our being. Yes. And I thought, but I don't know about you tonight, but I want more power. Yes. God. I thought, I, I don't want to be, be doing things that would cost me my relationship with God. God wants us, uh, wants to hear from us. Mm -hmm. uh, I thought, that, you know, I was talking to Sister Kathy the other day, and I don't know, we were driving down the road or whatever, talking about the grandkids, and, and uh, you know, Kenley still, she's just a what, six or seven year old, and I think she's seven, six. And, uh, you know, she's still pretty dependent. If she's at the house, she's, she, she's my mom's girl. And, uh, but, uh, you know, Colin, he's up, he's 10 year old now. And he's got that, that mentality, you know, I, I take care of all this myself. And, and I was telling Sister Kathy, I said, you know, I know he still depends on me. And he still needs me. But he don't depend on me like he used to. Right. It used to be all the time, Papa, Papa, Papa. And, uh, but yesterday I was sitting on the couch and, and I didn't feel real good and, and, uh, it was getting up toward the evening and I was sitting there and, and my recliner all laid back and he called and he came down, his old motorcycle, he's, he's about wore it out and, and, uh, and he said, I'm going back to the garage and clean my air box out. And I said, well, okay. Well, he's back there and directly he said, he, my phone rang and, and I looked, it was him and he, and I said, okay, I'm on, I'll be back there. And I said it with that grudgery sound. Sister Kathy said, you said you wanted him to depend on me. <laughs> but I was resting. I was tired. And I was relaxing. And, uh, <clears throat> and uh, so I got on up and I went back there and I helped him change the oil on his motorcycle, whatever he was doing. And, and uh, we got the things done. And, and we got back and I was sitting there and I began to think about that. I thought, I'd hate to call that on God and him saying, well, if I have to, God. if I've got to, I'll, 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 do, it. I'll do it. And me knowing that he wants to spend time with me, he wants me to depend on him, but instead God's always right there. Not one time have I ever called on Brother Jim that he said, well, after a while, God has always met the need when the need there have been a few times that it didn't happen just when I thought it ought to, but the hand of God was still moving. And I thought, I want to be able to depend on God. Uh, my grandkids know that if they want something, and if, if it's within my mom and papa's power, and if it's within reason, then we're going to try to help them. Uh, we back there working on his old dirt bike yesterday. Papa, if I find a motorcycle for around 2000 Will you help me get it? And I said, son, I ain't got 2000 to buy it. I would, I would like to, but I, I can't do that. But within reason, as long as we keep this old thing riding and you can ride it, then I'll, I'll be there to help you. And I thought, but we've got to do things within reason. Right. But I thought, when we depend on God, and God can depend on us, right. we can have the power that we need right. to be effective with right. God. But we've yes, got to have power to be effective. Oh, it's necessary. 
I've got a truck of bourbons there at the house I worked on a couple weeks ago. He was driving and he quit. And uh, and I brought it to the house and I put a new fuel pump on it. I still can't get it started. And he's by the other day and I said, I'm working on this and, and I've got the new fuel pump in and it works. But I can't get power through these relays and this fuse panel to fire that fuel pump up. And I can't understand what's going on. So I hooked my computer to it and I, and I, and I scanned it. And I've come up with the with the the only thing that I can figure out is the computer in the truck has gone bad. And I thought, but if it ain't got if that computer ain't sending the signal to that relay to kick that relay in to power that through that fuse, it ain't gonna get no power back to that fuel pump, oh, no. and that truck is not gonna run because everything has to work in sequence. I do not understand how all that works, but I thought. I understand enough to know that that's what it's going to take. And so I also, I don't understand the way God does everything. But I do know that if I'm going to be effective for God, that I've got to be in that chain of sequence. Oh, yes. That everything has to work. Yes, yes, yes. In the order that God wants it to work. Right, right. Yes, God. Like we've, got to, we've got to be separated. We've got to be clean and live, live holy before God. Right. Before we can ever be effective for God. Right. We've got to, we've got to, people got to see a difference in us in order for us to be effective for Him. As they come against the song tonight, <clears throat> I hope I've helped you. And like I said, this is an old three point message. This is all the Lord laid on my heart. And I've been thinking about it for most of the week. And I thought, I want more power when it comes to God. I want to have the power that's necessary that I can lead my family back to where they need to be with God. Yeah. They give us a song tonight. Let's pray.